can tell you with certainty that after 18 years, Natalie's case, it's solved. As far as I'm concerned, it's over. It's over. A suspect has finally been brought forward for a possible plea deal in the case of Natalie Holloway. If you're not all too familiar with this case, then just give me a second. On May 30th, 2005, Natalie Holloway spent the night at the Carlos and Charlie's Club in Orenastada, Aruba. The last time she was ever seen, she was driving off in a gray Honda with a group of local men. In June of 2005, Vandersloot and two brothers, Deeprock and Satish Kalpo, were arrested on suspicion of kidnapping and murder. But by September, those charges will be dropped. Seeing as these were the last people to ever see Natalie alive, in November 2007, those same men would then be arrested. But in December, just like in 2005, those charges would be released one more time. 2008, the case would again be reopened by Aruban officials after a tape of Vandersloot came out of him describing the murder and the details of her death. This was all captured on a hidden camera. However, they were unable to corroborate his statements. In 2010, Vandersloot allegedly demanded money Vandersloot tried to extort a quarter million dollars from Holloway's mother in exchange for information about her missing daughter's remains. Beth Holloway, Natalie Holloway's mother, and John Q. Kelly, Beth Holloway's lawyer, they, with officials, set up a sting operation, and he met with Vandersloot at a hotel in Aruba, giving him $10,000 as Beth Holloway wired $15,000 directly to his account. He provided some details which sounded like he changed his story allegedly claiming that the last time that he had seen her, he picked her up, but that she demanded to be put down, so he threw her to the ground. When he threw her down, he says that her head smashed against a rock and that she had passed away instantly from the impact. He even allegedly took the lawyer to a house and claims that his father had buried Natalie's body in the foundation of a building. Now, listen to this part. May 2010, specifically May 30th, 2010. Remember the day that Natalie died, May 30th, 2005. Horan van der Sloot has been staying in Aruba, but he takes the money that he received from the mother and then goes to Peru. And on that day, May 30th, 2010, he then takes the life of Stephanie Flores. This is a 21-year-old college student living in Lima, Peru. Her body was found massacred in his hotel room. He then takes himself up and goes from Peru over to Chile. And then one month later in June, he sent from Chile back to Peru to face charges. He was indicted in the U.S. on federal charges of wire fraud and extortion in the connection with the alleged March 2010 meeting in Aruba with Beth Holloway's attorney, John Q. Kelly. And then in 2012, he pleaded guilty to the murder of Stephanie Flores. He was sentenced to 28 years in prison in Peru. Now, why is all of this relevant? Well, in 2023, the U.S. made plans for his extradition from Peru to the United States. Guess what month they did it in? That's right, May. And on June 8th, 2023, Horan Vandersloot landed at an airport in Birmingham, Alabama, touching U.S. soil. Now today, it's been announced that a possible plea deal might be going forward if details of the whereabouts of her body are actually laid out. This case has been ongoing for a very long time. And it's always fascinating to me when a case reopens and has the potential of being closed out five years, 10 years, 15, and in some cases, 20 years later. It's not fascinating because of the circumstance. It is encouraging though, to know that someone somewhere, even almost 20 years later, is still seeking after justice, or at the very least, to give this mother some closure. There isn't really much else to disagree on, so I don't really need to give out the option, but let me know what it is that you guys think, and I will see you again for the next one. Be easy, y'all. Today, I can tell you with certainty that after 18 years, Natalie's case, it's solved. As far as I'm concerned, it's over. It's over.